I'm a kid of the 60s that grew up with uh, TV and thought this, this would be the perfect job for me. So I uh, ended up going to school and, and uh, majoring in television and, um, and uh, got interested in all the electronics that was involved in it. And, and I guess about a year ago, it, the light bulb went off over my head that with all the, the, the changeover to high definition flat panel TVs, all of the old CRT TVs were going away. And, you know, this is, this is the technology that I grew up and my, my career started, started with. And if I wanted to have a, a piece of uh, this technology, I would have to find something pretty soon. Otherwise, the longer I wait, the fewer and fewer TVs are going to be out there. So I happened to come across this Motorola 17-inch uh, 1958 metal cabinet television, and I thought, well, I better, you know, I'll get it. It was it was a, a good price, and I thought, well, I'll, I'll see if I can get this thing to work. This is a 1958 Motorola uh, black and white portable, and this belongs to a local fan and. Um, also someone who works in the television industry. He uh, works on, I think his most notable show is America's Funniest Home Videos. And he contacted me and wanted to know if I would take a look at this. And in this video, this is going to be a short analysis. So we'll start by pulling the back off and seeing what kind of capacitors are in it and what they look like. This is a set he intends to use a couple hours a week. So we want to go through it and do it right. This is not really a resurrection video. Um, we're actually going to get most of these old bad capacitors out of here. And we might, I might start by troubleshooting uh, why it's doing what it does, which it loses sync after about 15 or 20 minutes, but you'll see that next. Um, so I might troubleshoot that first, but this first video is going to just be kind of a show and tell and analysis video. So uh, let's get it opened up and uh, it's going to be a long video. I hope you guys enjoy it. All right, let's have a nice look here. Looks very clean. It's fused. Motorola really did make nice stuff. Um, what I'm interested to see is the capacitors. What, what did they use? What brand? All that. It does not appear that it has... The yoke has a plug. It does not have a... Um, ion trap. It's, it is a little bit too late for that. 1258... Okay, let me see what it takes to get the chassis out, and we'll have a look at the back. Looks low hour to me, actually. Chassis is out, and if you've been following my stuff for a while, you've seen the General Electric and Hot Point TVs that were basically the same era metal cabinet that I got going and this thing is a whole different level of quality. In fact, this, I think, is a whole different level of quality from most sets I've worked on. Um, this uses a voltage doubler off the line. Those right there in sockets are the rectifier diodes. I know they look like fuses, but they're the rectifier diodes. The fuse is socketed, and it's right there. And we have test points. This is a test point socket. And let's see. Try and... Here, can you flip this up for me? Oh, it's going to bend that tab there. What is this? Hold it there. We 
Did you say that's aftermarket? An aftermarket replacement? I was wondering. This might be a rep this one might have been replaced too. It's awfully shiny. Is that the, ori the original Motorola damper tube? Yeah, this is definitely a low hour set. Okay, let's. Okay, so we got all of these, and they're actually Motorola branded. Um, Aerovox style aluminum good all. These things are junk. They're le always leaky. They explode. They were billed at the time as one of the best capacitors money could buy, but it's basically just a paper capacitor sealed in a ceramic tube with um, wax caps on the end of it. But they're junk. They leak. They got to go. These power resistors are kind of interesting, these standoff power resistors. Lots of disk capacitors that are good. But yeah, all of these white, all of these white ones have to go. Very good quality television though. This is miles above that GE as far as the quality goes. Have this nice tube strap spring here. What I'm gonna do with this is I'm gonna go through the SAMs and analyze which capacitors I need. I'll go down to the local guy and get them. And then we'll do a recap video on it. I'll recap it and um, we'll test it out and see if that corrected the problem. Okay, just a quick look at our SAMs. You can see we have a sink phase inverter here and the vertical sink comes off the plate. Horizontal sink comes off of the uh, cathode and then right here we have a .02 and over here it's connected to the plate here which has 200 and something volts on it so if this was to leak at all it would leak this plate voltage and throw the bias of this tube off so that's just one kind of rough guess at what might cause the symptom you're about to see um, when I when I graduated from from college I got an internship in the early 80s working uh, for public access. Um, oh, there it is. I figured I'd put something on that was uh, age appropriate for this TV set. I don't think they had, they didn't have closed captions back then. Um, anyway, what this TV does is it, it comes on and the picture is pretty stable and then after it's been on for about five minutes or so it loses horizontal lock. One day I was shooting an episode of, of the show and we would shoot two different shows on the same day. So oh, here it's starting yeah. It's starting to lose uh, vertical lock here. Does it lose vertical or horizontal? I, it loses horizontal. Well, it loses vertical too, I guess apparently. I noticed when you started there was a lot of vertical compression at the top. Mm -hmm. uh, the heads were real flattened out at the top yeah. of the screen. Yeah, well, I've been playing, I was playing with some of the controls the vertical inside deflection. too. Yeah, I was trying was to adjust flat. the height and linearity inside because right. those are, you know, adjustments. And that, that may be me, I don't know. Every year I get to do just just really fun stuff. I hear it now. It's losing. Now it's losing horizontal. <laughs> it's losing everything. It's, it's getting more interesting. It's getting, getting it's worse. Really it's getting worse and worse. Drifting. So, um, I guess you don't won't be able to tell 
how strong the CRT is until you get it. It looks strong to me. It looks it looks strong it's to me. It's strong. You know, and when I opened, I took the back off the TV and I looked inside, and I thought, normally, it's got you know, twenty years worth of dust and gunk and stuff inside on all the tubes and everything, and it looked very clean. The chassis looks very clean right. to me. So I thought, you know, I I, I hear you theorize about bedroom TVs and TVs that might not get a lot of hours and I'm thinking that this might be one of those. That looks that looks very when these black and white CRTs get weak you get a lot of uh, cloudy inversion type mm -hmm. where when you crank the brightness up the the, the face the is all actually dark, yeah. yeah yeah so Yeah, we'll, we'll we'll go through this for you, and we'll get that sorted out. Okay. That, I don't know. That could be a capacitors. That could be a tube. That a lot of times I find these gassy tubes now that they don't show up on the tube tester because it really takes them this long before they start wigging out. Mm -hmm. You know, as they heat up, things expand in there and they short out or whatever. Mm -hmm. But. Um, let me see. Did you have the Sams there? Uh, yeah. Okay. So how about what are you want to talk about? Some of the current stuff you're working on in television, sure. or um, for the past uh, 16 years, I've been the studio engineer for America's Funniest Videos. Um, I started the same year that Tom Bergeron started as the mm -hmm. host of the show. Yeah. Um, in the, the first few years of the show, we would do a segment called the Slow Mo Gizmo, which was basically a telestrator that they use in sports to you know draw lines on the screen, yeah, you know to diagram yeah. football plays and stuff like that. So they had the idea that it would be funny if Tom Bergeron uh, diagrammed videos. So he would sit in front of a telestrator on the set, and then he would talk to me and say, okay, I've got David uh, in the control room on the controls, and he call me by name, and you go, David, are you there? And so, and then they never, wrote, they never told me what to say. They just said, just talk to him. So I said, yeah, I'm here. I've got my hand on the control. I've got my hand on the, uh, what, something, and I don't know. What, you the know. subject of these videos is not me. It's the content of what's going on. Mm -hmm. For instance, we've been watching this TV here, probably Going getting <laughs> getting ready to self destruct for thirty minutes. Right. You know, it's as the as the capacitors turn into resistors yeah, and to lose yeah, the yeah, yeah, it's those, those uh, <laughs> probably probably there's probably people watching this that are probably pulling their hairs out one by one. <laughs> you know, just. Okay. just <laughs> No white, no white dot. So right. that's one thing I remember from from uh, a kid is the white watching the white dot disappear. Yeah, looking at the Sams, it's obviously loaded with capacitors that need to go if you're going to use it. Yeah. 